All right, welcome to another video. In the last video we talked about unit vectors and how to work with them and basically what they mean. Now let's get some practice in describing vectors in unit vector notation. So the, for the first example here we have uh, you drive to a city 150 kilometers from home going 30 degrees north of east. Express new position in unit vector notation. So we have a complicating sounding vector and all we have to do is write it in unit vector notation with the i hats and the j hats. Oop, i hat j hat. I always write my i hats backwards. I don't know why. So, and we also know it's saying 30 degrees north of east. So we might want to write like a little compass here in a sense, so we don't get confused about which are which. So we have east, north, west, and south. All right. So we're gonna just let's draw out our vector. So this is the east direction, and here's the north direction. All right, and we're going 30 degrees north, north of east. So it's going to be 30 degrees north of east. And this whole distance we're going to travel is 150 kilometers. Now we need to describe that in terms of unit vector notation. Well, in the vector component video, we learn we can just this vector here is no nothing more than the sum of the x component vector which is this and the, the y component vector which is here all we have to do is add those together and we have this vector we learned that in the the vector addition video where you learn the tip to tail method so the magnitude here from the sokotoa well, this is the adjacent side to the angle, the adjacent side to the angle, and it's going to be cosine, it's going to be 150 kilometers times the cosine of 30 degrees, and the, the y direction is going to be 150 kilometers times the sine of 30 degrees. All right? So, all we have to do is express this in unit vector notation. Well, the x direction is the i hat direction, so it's going to be i hat, sorry, i hat, and <clears throat> this y component is in the j hat direction, so it's going to be j hat. If it was heading down, we could call it negative j hat. If we wanted to call north negative, this uh, north negative and south positive, we could do that too. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's just whatever you decide your coordinates to be, it needs to follow suit. So this is going to be 150 kilometers cosine 30 in the i hat and 150 kilometers sine 30 in the j hat. Uh, 150 kilometers times cosine of 30 degrees is going to roughly be 130 kilometers. And that's i hat, i hat. And our y unit vector is going to be, well, sine of 30 is 1 half, and half of 150 is 75 kilometers in the j hat direction. Quick note, when you're plugging these things into your calculator to get these values, make sure if you're using degrees, your calculator is in mode degrees. You just go to mode and you'd select degrees. If you're in radians, you're going to get incorrect answers. Uh, if the problem's in radians, then yes, you need to make sure you're in radians as well. So that'll be under the mode button on your calculator. All right, so now we just have to express this vector in unit vector notation. So this is a position vector we're dealing with and it's 130 i hat plus 75 j hat kilometers so instead of telling you uh, that i drove to a city 150 kilometers away from home going 30 degrees north of east i could also just tell you i traveled to a city uh, 130 kilometers east and i went 75 kilometers north or 130 kilometers in the i hat direction and 75 kilometers in the j hat direction and if i was telling you and having a conversation with you i'm pretty sure you would understand more of where i went or the direction i took if i told you i went this far in this direction and this far in the other direction versus i tell you i went 150 kilometers going uh 30 degrees north of east that's that's just nonsense in our brains so this allows us to elegantly describe a vector in terms of its components. 
All right, so in the last vector, or in the last uh, clip, we looked at breaking a vector and describing it in unit vector notation. Well, let's say you have something in unit vector notation, and for whatever reason, you need to describe it as its magnitude and angle from the x-axis. Well, let's go ahead and, and this is going to be the one, find the magnitude of the vector, our vector, and determine its angle to the x-axis. The uh, result, the uh, position vector is equal to 34 i hat plus 13 j hat meters. So that means 34 in the positive x direction and 13 in the positive y direction. So let's go ahead and draw a system here. And this will be the positive x and this will be the positive y. All right. So we go 34 units. So let's just say this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So it's 35 units, rough, 34 units is roughly right around here. And we'll say 5, 10, 15, so 13 units roughly here. So 34 i hat, so that's going to be all the way out here. It's 34 i hat. And we need to add that, tip to tail, to 13 j hat. So 13 j hat roughly ends right about here. So we just add that up. So we have 13 j hat. So here's 13 j hat, or 13 meters in the y direction. 13 meters j hat. And the x component is 34 meters i hat in the x direction, positive x direction. Now when we add those vectors, you just start at the tip tail of one and draw a line to the tip of the other. And this is the vector. So we need to know what is its magnitude and degrees above the x-axis. I put theta there for the degrees. We need to know what this is, and we also need to know this length. Well, the length is simple enough. It's We could just use Pythagorean theorem, which says a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are just the sides of the triangle, and c is the hypotenuse. Well, 34 squared, so this is going to be 34 squared plus 13 squared will equal c squared. 34 squared is 1,156. 13 squared is 169. And that's equal to C squared. Those added together gives us 1,325. And that's going to be equal to C squared. So all we have to do is take the square root of that. And we get roughly C is equal to about 36.4 meters. All right, so this is how far this resultant vector went. That's the total displacement that took place. And this value here is 36.4 meters. So what's the, the degrees? Well, we can calculate that using SOHCAHTOA. We could actually, we have all the sides, so we can use any one of these. Um, let's go ahead and use the tangent as these are the exact numbers. This is a uh, uh, kind of a rounded off number, so we'll use the exact numbers here. So the tangent of theta is equal to 13 over 34, and you should know your arc tan or inverse tan. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 13 over 34. So basically, what we're saying here is what degree of tangent is it that gives us a value of 13? over 34. And this this uh, inverse tangent button should be on your calculator. And if it confuses you, uh, find some videos throughout YouTube or the internet that help describe uh, describe inverse tan or inverse trig functions to you. But we get that the um, theta after plugging into the calculator is equal to 20.92 degrees, which we'll just call 21 degrees. So we'll write that in here. So if, if I was to tell you, hey, I have this uh, vector, it's 34 i hat, 13 j hat meters, well, I could tell you, hey, well, that's uh, that's 36.4 meters. Uh, that's, a, that's 21 degrees above the x-axis. So that's another way of describing. So, you, so what we've done is we went from, for the first example, we went from uh, telling you the magnitude and the angle of a vector and then breaking it into its unit vectors. And in this one, we went from unit vectors and went back to our uh, resultant vector. 
All right, so now, we, so now we know how to take a vector, break it into its components, and describe it in unit vector notation. So let's take a quick look at the applications of this, and we'll, I'll, I'll have another video out where we really continue to, to talk about the applications of writing vectors like this. So you see here we have this, this uh, let's talk about the problem. So the position of an object as a function of time is given by this uh, vector here with t in seconds. Find the object's acceleration vector. All right, and if you look here, this is the i hat direction. So this is its position at any time in the x direction, and here this is the position at any time in the y direction, the j hat direction. All right. Now, position. Um, when we're looking at what position is, we have if we take the derivative of this function, this position with time, a rate of change of w position with time, we know that to be velocity. And our velocity, if we take the derivative of our velocity, we know that to be our acceleration vector. So what do we need to do here? Well, we need to take two derivatives. We're, we're here with this. We need to take the derivative with respect to time to get velocity and take the derivative with respect to time to get acceleration. If that is confusing at all, go ahead and rewatch or watch the videos that I've posted on uh, on one one dimensional motion, and it should clarify these for you. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. How do you take the derivative of this? Well, the derivative of the position with respect to time is going to be equal to, and what you're going to do is you're actually going to take the derivative of the i hat direction and the derivative of the j hat direction separately and you're going to keep them separate. Now if you take the derivative of this you could take the derivative of the first piece and the second piece individually. That's one of the rules of uh, taking derivatives. So the derivative of this is 3 plus 4 t i hat. And that's going to be plus now we have to take the derivative of the j hat direction. Well the derivative of 2t is 2 and the derivative of negative 3t squared is negative 6t and this is j hat and this can be in meters per second. So at any point in time now that you place in here it's going to tell you the velocity at that time. So we need to take one more derivative in order to get the object's acceleration vector. So the derivative of vector v which is this with respect to time the change in velocity with respect to time, that's defined as acceleration. And we do the same thing. We take the derivative of the i hat components and the derivative of the j hat components separately. The derivative of any constant is 0. And the derivative of 4t is 4. So it's going to be 4 i hat plus the derivative of 2 is 0. It's constant. And the derivative of negative 6t is negative 6 j hat. And these units will be in meters per second squared because it's an acceleration. So this is the object's acceleration vector. Now you notice there's no more t's in here. Well it's because these are quadratic so by the time you get to the second derivative well your accelerations are actually constant. So it means on the x direction he's constantly accelerating 4 meters per second squared every second. And in the j hat direction going down, this is the negative j hat direction, he's accelerating at 6 meters per second squared and that's also constant. So you can use unit vectors to go from a position vector down to an acceleration vector and this is also ac applicable to any any vector, any type of vector in physics. Coming soon will be some more uh, applications of unit vector notation. Thanks for watching.